Good morning. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. Yeah, we well, welcome you to Mornings with Brian and Tyler. Today we are in Exodus 17, verses 8 through 16. Tyler. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to, Josh, to Joshua to come, or choose, good grief, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let his, down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Now, and then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn, the God will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. All right. So the name of the Lord here that he reveals is Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Um... <clears throat> notice what's going on here and and this is a lesson that church people need to learn okay um, Joshua has to wage the fight but the strength in Joshua's fight comes from Moses's intercession now, Moses' intercession is totally worthless if there's not a Joshua to fight the fight. But Joshua can't be effective in battle without Moses' intercession. But Moses becomes tired. And you go, well, yeah, brother, he was 80 plus years old. And trying to hold the stick up the whole time. Trying to hold that stick up. Because remember, we, we read in Exodus what? The Lord said, I'm going to give you a stick by which you'll do these signs. So, whether he's holding it up like this, or whether he held it out one-handed, like I, we don't know exactly what his posture was. But Aaron and her, he gets tired, and uh, unless you lay lay in the corner right there, I think it's in that corner. No. No. Yeah, both that. Huh. And it's abdicated its spot. I wonder where my shillelagh is. Well, normally I've got a shillelagh in my office. Would you like a bow stuff instead? No. Okay. But if you try and hold out, say, a three or four foot long stick that's about an inch and a half or so in diameter, and you try and hold it out for, say, an hour, you know what you find? Uh, yeah, your arm's going to get tired, your shoulder's going to get sore, your back's going to get sore. It's not because Moses was old. When you read this stuff, remember, the, the scripture will close out and say, the day that Moses died, his eye was not dim, nor was his strength abated. He was just as strong the day he died as he was when he killed that Egyptian at 40 years old. Moses was tough all his days. He was strong. And I don't care how strong you are. Strongest strong man. Dude lift 500 pounds. Make him hold a stick. See if he can hold one stick straight out for 8, 10, 12 hours. Not happening. It's not going to happen. So that's one of those little truths. So Aaron and her have to come alongside and support Moses physically so Moses can continue his intercession at some point Christians have to figure out this great truth um, stop saying God can replace your preacher with any other preacher stop saying that stop talking about how this elder or that elder was better than whoever else Quit comparing preachers to preachers. Quit comparing deacons. At some point, 
deacons, elders, preachers, and church members have to get it through their noggins. But if we're not all on the same page, if we're not supporting the ones who are making intercession, and if we're not fully following the guy who's leading us into battle, we're going to fail. And it won't be Jehovah Nisi. I don't know how to say in Hebrew, Jehovah totally failed and dropped the ball because he's a bad God. Oh, wait. No, he said, brother, you can't say that. Well, you can't say he's your banner either if you're not going to follow the program. And if you're not going to follow and support those who stepped out to lead, you're never going to get to victory. And you know who people will blame it on? Yeah. They'll blame it on the preacher or the elder or the deacons. But eventually a time will come where they'll go, I wonder how come God... And it was never any of the others. It was a failure of everybody to do their part without complaint mm -hmm. to go on the road to success. So, other thoughts, my brother? No, sir. With Adam, Brian, Reagan, this is? Tyler Kelly. Remember, work together this week. Achieve great things for the Lord. I'm Brian Reagan. We'll see you this evening.